Welcome to the Business Information Buffet Podcast, also known as the Bid Podcast, where everybody eats. The Bid Podcast is brought to you by the College of Southern Nevada's Small Business Entrepreneurship Development, powered by CSM Blackstone Launchpad. Are you ready to eat? Because this is where everybody eats. Welcome to the Business Information Buffet Podcast, also known as the Bid Podcast, where everybody eats. Powered by the Blackstone Launchpad here at the College of Southern Nevada, we are your host, Sean Torrey, and Mr. Core Don Allen, the Don himself. How you doing, good sir? Feeling good. I got a new chair. I'm excited. I, I see that. Yeah. You know what I'm I saying? Like You're looking this. real comfortable. I like this. <laughs> we might have to do some permanent adjustments on this. Maybe, maybe, I'm sorry that I did. <laughs> I apologize, man. But, man, we have two phenomenal guests that I'm like I've been waiting to get on because they had me on their podcast mm -hmm. and man they got me to be all vulnerable and I, I shared I shared some stuff I never got a chance to share publicly so I want to thank y'all for that right off the bat and our guest today I actually sorry before we get to the guests our our episode today is called of course gridability <laughs> with the special guests who are excited who are excited to discuss having perseverance and what it really means so our guest today is Mr. and Mrs. Clausen, Mr. Adam and Ms. Rowe. So Ms. Rowe is the founder of Strong Prison Wives Families, 501c3 nonprofit organization within what with have more than 100,000 members. Since 2008, Rowe has prof, uh, provided extensive support, coaching, and private counsels to wives, girlfriends, sisters, mothers, and family members around the world who have incarcerated loved ones. And Mr. Adam Clausen is a leader, life coach, trainer, and an entrepreneur who, who per, whose purpose in life is to inspire others to live into their potential. In 2001, Adam was sentenced to a 213-year federal prison sentence with no chance of parole. But guess what? He's here in the bib. He's right there. He's right there. That's crazy. We make things happen. <laughs> <laughs> we made some phone calls. We made some phone calls. No, honestly, it's because of that woman right there, Miss Rowe. This man is here. Right. Um, and ladies, gentlemen, everyone in the place to be the phenomenal, dynamic Adam and Roe Clausen. What's going on? Welcome to the BIM. Thank you. What a great yeah. intro. Oh you like that God. intro? God, thank you. <laughs> you can we intro us on anywhere, intro. anytime. Come on. Like, we got you. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming on to the show. How are y'all doing? Oh, man, we're excited to be here. Yeah, thank you for having us. No, it's an honor to come on. It's an honor to have y'all on the show and for y'all to come on. Uh, just for me to be on your show meant a lot. Um, for the like, Gridability podcast that you both do, your story. Man, I don't want to take up more space in the room because I want y'all to tell your story. So the first segment of our show is the blueprint. So we wanted the blueprint. Shout out to Hove, Jay-Z. But... Blueprint, as you know, of a building is really the design, the architect of how things came about. So for the Mr. Adam and Roe Clausen story, what's the blueprint? How did you guys get to here to where you're traveling across the world, really being the, uh, really being the hope, and this ain't cliche to say, but hope for prisoners, right? Really trying to get rights for prisoners on the, on the outside. Now you're on the outside. And Ms. Roe being that support for folks who have... Um, have husbands or who have partners inside the system because mm -hmm. one thing people don't know is here at the College of Southern Nevada, we do have a prison program. We have, we have, yeah, we have um, youth who I've had the chance to interact with that came into school, take classes, they get out, they come here, they interact with me. I really get them on their feet when I was working here. So when Adam, when I met you because of our good friend Caleb, who was also on the show, uh, both shows. He's been on yours and mine. When when Caleb introduced me to you and I heard your story, I was like, "Oh yeah, we got to get you on this podcast because you both are phenomenal. You're rocking it." And not only that, we we don't think about our students who've been incarcerated, and it's a population that's here and they deserve. They have a voice and they want to be entrepreneurs too. So I felt it was perfect to have someone like you both to, to have a powerful couple like you two both on the podcast. So please tell us about y'all. I love that. But before we tell us about yeah. us, tell yeah. you about us, I want to say this. Majority of people who have been or are incarcerated yeah. were born entrepreneurs. Ooh. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That is that is interesting. Oh, please say more. 
Yeah. So I was doing research one time and I ran across this guy who was making millions in business, right. formerly incarcerated, and he was a Coke dealer mm. on the street. And he was like, everything I did on the street, yeah. I just took and to, did it to something legit. Right. right. And it was all the same skills. Right. Lots of leaders, lots of very, very smart people who have been in desperate situations that we'll say make the wrong decision right. and get them, they get trapped up in the system. Once they're caught up in the system, typically they're stuck in right. that revolving mm -hmm. door. So this guy got out and he was able to just transfer the skills. And, and have a legit, legitimate business. Legitimate all the, business. All those skills he learned there. Amazing. Man. Yep. Oh. Access to resources and right. education. Okay. That's what most people lack. Mm. It's not that they don't have the hustle. Right. right. You know what I mean? The desire right. to do it. They just don't have the means. Right. No, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. So tell us about, tell, man, tell us how, because I know those things, qualities and traits y'all have, y'all possess. Tell us about y'all's story. Yeah. So how far back do you want us to go? Let's say, <laughs> let's, let's go to the port to where you both met. Okay. Um, where you both met and the, tr the road that took. Because for you to hold this man down for as long as you did, people need to hear. <laughs> a lot of patience. Yeah. So there's, there were two versions of this story until mm -hmm. Adam came home because oh. I had to fill out. I'll let you fill in the gaps. But real quick, I had to fill out a form to be able to go visit Adam. They do this background check. Right. It's this whole thing. Right. Well, on the form, it said, did you know each other prior to incarceration? Right. So... Adam at the time told me, he's like, listen, like people are getting denied for this and we're just going to tell this little white lie. Not that we're into lying. Right. Honesty is the best policy. But at the time we said we did. Yeah. And then when I started Strong Prison Wives and Families, my nonprofit, it was, it started out, it's all online. Right. And I had to tell the story that we knew each other before. We knew each other in high school. Right. We didn't actually, but I had to because I lied on a federal form. Right. Statute of limitations has passed. We're fine. Mm. But <laughs> right. I didn't want to put that out there because it could bite me in the ass. Yeah, and he's right. a lifer. The only thing we had at that point was visits. Right. That's what we lived for. If they took that away from me, our relationship would have probably gone downhill very, very, very fast. Right. So that's... The actual story is that we didn't know each other before. I'm going to let Adam tell that part because I love the way he tells it. Yeah. Um, and, well, I'm sorry. The actual story is, yeah, we didn't know each other before. Go ahead, fill it in. So the way that we met was, you know, in prison, I really changed my whole identity. Right. I came in there and people saw me in a certain way by my past. Right. Which gave me a different level of respect um, and space, mm -hmm. physical space that I needed to really focus on myself. And over the course of about 10 years, I found a passion for fitness right. and I went all in. I was very fortunate that I had my first mentor in prison, kind of set me on the right path, gave me access to the education that I needed right. and gave me space to work with others. Right. So my identity becomes the fitness guru. Right. Nobody sees me as my past anymore, mm -hmm. not just as that. So one day this guy comes in, big bodybuilder from Jersey, and immediately they're like, man, you got to go see Adam. Yeah. Go see Adam. He's the fitness guru, right? So this big bodybuilder comes up to my cell and he's all excited. Hey, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, slow down. <laughs> and he starts telling me about, you know, his situation, why he's there. And he's like, hey, my girl's going to be coming up and she's got a friend, you know, it's like our cousin. Right. How about she come up and, you know, the two of you could, could have a visit together. And I'm like, well, slow down, man. I was like, I'm not interested right now. Right. And he looks at me like I'm crazy, right? <laughs> I'm doing 213 years. Right. You don't want to see a beautiful woman? Right. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just, I'm at a space where I'm good. I don't need any more complications in my life. And over time, he convinces me. He's like, man, she's really into fitness. You two would be great. I said, okay, well, let's hook us up. We'll talk. So we start emailing. And I very quickly realize that it's the first time in my life that I really got to know someone on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. Before I, you even met her, right? Yeah, before I ever met her. Well, you didn't technically lie then. Yeah. <laughs> True. Good point. <laughs> but this was just emails. And at the right, time, right. they had just brought the email system in. So I felt fortunate to you know, have access and, and be sending these emails back and forth. And I realized, I was like, this is getting serious. Right. Um, kind of like when you're a kid and you're on the phone all the time like with a girl and because... You know, you don't have a car, you can't get to see her. Right. So it reminded me of that, 
but the depth was so much different. And I said, man, this, this is serious. I don't know how I'm going to handle this, but I'm like, she's everything that I would want, right. you know, in an ideal partner. Mm -hmm. And she came up that first time and that was it. Man. Like I saw her and I was like, man, let me feel something in though. I always feel the need <laughs> to say this. I wasn't looking for some guy in prison, especially some lifer in prison. Right. They presented it to me because I'm in the middle of breaking up with this guy. You guys asked me before I'm from Jersey. Is GTL really a thing? It is, right? I lived the Jersey Shore life. <laughs> I left my dignity at the Jersey Shore, or most of it. So I'm breaking up with the shore with this guy, shore season. I'm on this friend's front porch crying about this guy. And she I go home, go to sleep, wake up the next morning, and she calls me and she's like, listen. My boyfriend met this guy. Do you want to talk to him? And I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> right. what do I, why? And she goes, you know, like what you were telling me last night. It's just a friend, somebody to bounce stuff off of. And I was like, for what? Yeah. No, like I have no interest. And then he had a friend who had built him a website at that point. And it was his whole story. And she gave me the website URL. And I went on there and I looked and I was like, wow, this is really unfair. Yeah. And not for anything, but he could use a friend, I'm right, right, sure. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's how it started. I wanted nothing romantic. Neither yeah. of us wanted anything romantic. Like, what Same. were we going to do with that's that? That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. We could what? Exactly. Like, what are we going to do with this? I'm serving a life sentence. Mm -hmm. And at this time, there's no talk about criminal justice reform. Right. You know, it was all hard on crime, especially me being a repeat violent offender. Right, right. The only chance was for us to get Congress to change the law right. or to get a president, a sitting president, to sign a commutation, basically reducing my sentence. Right. So that's where our relationship started. It, it started over that shared passion for fitness um, and really on connecting on a deeper level right. when neither one of us was looking for that. So we kind of fell into this relationship. We had to have some serious conversations early on like, Okay, this is the situation, right? Like, I believe that at some point I'm going to get a second chance. Right. But it's not going to be anytime soon. And she was like, well, I believe that you're going to get a second chance, and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that we have a chance, an opportunity to have a life together. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, when she made that commitment and, and decision, you know, that was tough for me. Right. Because for me, it was like this additional responsibility mm. where if I'm being honest about it, like when I had freed myself of all those other relationships, especially yeah. all the negative ones, I felt like free. I was like, man, I only have to worry about myself. I get to focus on becoming a better version of myself. Right. Now I'm responsible for someone else. Yeah. Right. Like if she's going to make this commitment every day, I'm going to have to be focused on our future together, making sure that I'm doing everything, even on those days when I don't feel like it, right? She's a part of it now. So mm -hmm. it was a kind of up that level of commitment that I had. And after we had those conversations and, and decided, man, we're in this, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Like we started very actively figuring out, okay, how are we gonna, you know, end up with this life that we envisioned for ourselves? Right. And we really mapped it out. We spent a lot of time over the next decade really envisioning what our ideal life would look like and starting to put those pieces in place. To be fair, I had it easy. I'm in prison, right? right. Like I get the opportunity and notice how I frame this. Right, right. It's an opportunity for me to focus on myself. I have so much time every day to focus on my physical health and well-being. Mm -hmm my mental health and well-being, which is interconnected, but also to focus on those things, those educational pieces, skill development, public speaking, to build the skill set that I knew that I needed mm -hmm. to have the life that we envision on the other side. And I'm going to be honest, I had an extreme fear of public speaking wow. to the point of my, my first opportunity to get up in front of a group. When I tell you I choked, I mean that quite literally. My throat seized up. Whoa. I couldn't get a word out. And I'm looking to my partner. It's like, Tyler, Tyler, water, man, water. And there was a professor, because it was a college class, where these outside students had come in. By the time I got my bottle of water, the professor, who was slick, had slid back in there. And I stood behind him for the next 45, 50 minutes. And I never got back in. And I said, that'll never happen to me again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So I made public speaking one of those priorities. But these were things that I honed over years. I spoke at admissions and orientation right. every two weeks for like eight years. Man. That's how I developed some public speaking skills. Right. And I did it in an openly hostile crowd. These were people who did not want to be in the room and they sure didn't want to hear from me. They're like, man, you're, what do you got to tell me? Like, you're another dude in khakis just like me. And I'd get up there and be like, listen, man, I got all sorts of great things to tell you about. All the opportunities here, what we're doing with education, with this life coach training program. And I learned how to craft my narrative, my story, use it to connect with people, even those people who like, weren't really receptive to me at first. Right. Mm -hmm. A big part of this was becoming a coach. Mm. And that was my enhanced communication, a whole different level of skills. Right. And there was an education that went along with that. And this was where, this was our experience in so many ways. Not only did we connect on the fitness level to where we were able to share in that passion, we also connected in the area of like serving others. Mm. I love it. She was serving the outside community, those who had an incarcerated loved one. You served the inside. I was serving the inside community. I became a certified life coach right. while inside mm. through the support of the Institute for Life Coach Training right. in uh, Ohio. And a guy named Dr. Patrick Williams, mm -hmm. one of the uh, fathers of positive psychology, he and Dr. Ellen Ritter, they brought this coach training program in. An associate warden, Susan Folk, now Morris, like she became my first mentor and coach. It's a staff member, Man. right? I'm a guy serving a 213-year sentence. There's usually some very clear boundaries, right? She became my mentor, and she ultimately, she's now a very dear friend. Um, but she gave me this knowledge, this information, taught me, mentored me. Well, at the same time, she got an opportunity to go through the same program on the outside and have access to many of the same people, which better equipped her to serve her community. Mm. And ultimately, I'm gonna credit that with being a key component of the success of our relationship yeah. mm -hmm. because we communicate very well with each other and we're open to coaching one another. See, that's great, that's beautiful. Through every challenge. Through every challenge. Wow. And that's really strengthened our relationship. And so for you, because now you've been out for three years and now you, yeah. I know you're a great trainer because like, I did that mountain, I, I, that long mountain. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time we met. And uh, I was like, all right, I ain't did this in a minute, but we did it. Your story kept me through. Uh, and yeah, I haven't done that other challenge you, you said to do yet. I'm going to take some time on that. But um, to now be a personal trainer, to also be a life coach and travel, what could you say to our, before we get to the next segment, what could you say to our students who are who are formerly incarcerated, who some who who struggle with having like like they go they're here they're, they go here, but not feeling like like mm -hmm. having that support because it's it's almost as if now and I feel bad because when I left it was one of those things like I when I left here full time I was like man I was someone that they came to mm -hmm. uh, and one of my one of my good friends he he balanced that trying to deal with stuff at home with his kid and then deal with making sure he does what he's supposed to now that he's out. Mm -hmm. That pressure of the PO and going to class, what can you tell them want to stay motivated? What could you say to that student? To say to them, see, and this is the important part. You know, when you're going through those challenges, yeah. the most important thing that you can have, I know that was, you know, that inspired me the most was having someone else who'd gone through that experience. Yeah. Those credible messengers, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody with that same shared lived experience. Right. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same situation. But when you know somebody's been through some, like, some really tough times, mm -hmm. come out the other side and you see where they are now, but you know that past, that puts it, it makes it seem more attainable. Right. Right? That's why we love highlighting those kinds of stories. Yeah. And those are the individuals that... Man, they have great influence. Right. And that's what I was saying. It's so impactful when you become transparent. Yeah. You know, when you become vulnerable and you share that, man, that's what attracts people to you. That's what allows them to see the, you know, the potential that they have in themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I can say for myself, 
You know, there were some seeds that were planted at a very young age. Right. I had teachers who told me, a teacher said, you're going to end up in prison one day. I was 10 years old. Right. You don't tell a child that. Not at yeah, all. Right? You, you should You should know, regardless of what you think. But those are those implicit biases that people mm. place on those kids and they don't understand the severe impact. Then you wonder why people don't want to get into education. Yep. So it's, it's, it, it's it a catch It sticks, man. It sticks. Yeah. So knowing that so many people who come out of the system or have any sort of interaction with the system, it's traumatic. Yeah. To be put in cuffs is not normal, right? Yeah. So any interaction you have with the system is going to be traumatic. Yes. Understanding that, knowing that that's going to impart some limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. and you got to be conscious of those things. They need positive reinforcement, a lot of it, validation of you belong here, mm -hmm. like you're smart, you have so much potential. Right. And that needs to be articulated over and over again. Because I know for me, it wasn't, I was 35 years old. Right. 35 years old when I ended up in that classroom, finally with these other young college students from the outside. And I was like, man, I'm supposed to be here. Yeah. Like, I belong here. It shouldn't take until 35 years old. We need young people yeah. right after, when they come out of the system, we need to make sure that they feel like this is where they're supposed to be. Yeah, that's beautiful. So Can thank, I, you, thank oh, you for that. Yeah, go ahead. Right, I just right. want to add something to that, yes, too. Right. So two things. Number one, um, I always had a hard time because I felt like there were all of these resources and people that wanted to help prisoners right. and not many people that wanted to help their wives. Different story. But I'm saying Makes that sense. to say there are people out there that are your allies that want to help you so bad and right. help uh, attach themselves to you and your success. Find those people. Find those folks, yeah. Adam is the only person I know that did as much time as he did. Time alone, period. Yeah. That has no issues, no PTSD. He asks me all the time, like, am I acting funny? Not at all. Nothing. I'm actually the one that wound up with a lot of trauma wow. because I hid, right? I was always afraid of who to tell, who should I tell the truth? Should I lie? So I have a hard time now. Like I started to develop a little bit of social anxiety because yeah. if people would ask me, are you single? I had to do all this math and like these mental gymnastics in my head. Who do you know that might know somebody that I work with? Right. Do gotcha. you know my uh, family? Like, do you visit my family's restaurant? This type of stuff. Yeah. So for me, I developed that. I'm saying that to say honesty, transparency Fancy. with people that you trust yes. and you know and that are willing to help you. With your PO, those people. Quick story. Last month, my sister got married in Italy. Yeah. We were coming back through customs. Adam got off paper August 12th. Yeah. This is October 1st. He's been off paper for a while. Yeah. We got stopped at customs because they still had in the computer him on paper. Uh, so when that happened, right, I'm like, oh, my God. I was like, I'm here with my two-year-old. Yeah. I have to figure out how to get we're in Atlanta at customs, how to get back to Las Vegas, all of our stuff with a baby. He's probably in jail. I have no idea how long this is going to take. Like, And then in the moment, I'm like, all right, I just have to be a mom right now. I can't freak out. Right. But who did he call first on speed, on speed dial on speaker was his PO. Yeah. When she didn't answer, he called his first PO. Saturday afternoon, okay, they get right back to him. And then he called his attorney and all those other people. I'm saying that because he built such a good relationship with his PO, yeah. full transparency, nothing to hide. That's my advice to the yeah. people who are incarcerated that are listening to this. Right. As long as you're doing the right thing and you have nothing to hide, don't hide. Don't hide mm -hmm. Be honest, be transparent, be open, and you'll be fine. Man. No, thank you for that because this is something – and people, I, I look at my folks formerly or, or currently incarcerated as my forgotten students. Like, and, that, and that's something I don't like, but it's the reality. We have the program, but it's one of those unspokens. And the fact that you are alluding and talking about these things is very important. And I, I, I knew this, power, this episode would be impactful and powerful because we are hitting on a subject, a business area, that often does gets overlooked, and it's the fact that you both are serving your lives to do this work, I commend you. And with that, because we got more to do on the legend, I'm gonna pass it to Cordon because we're gonna go to our next section, which is the business on the fly. Yeah, so the next segment is gonna be business on the fly, where we ask you some either or questions, and then you pick your answer based on your preference, um, and then explain why you chose the answer that you chose. So the first ans the first question is visual or audio podcast. This is like the newlywed game. I love this. 
Uh, we can start here. Okay. Visual, 100%. Why? Because for me personally, I like to watch. I like to see, right. read people's body languages, mm -hmm. see their face, right? Because audio, they might have a reaction that you don't see, and then they change really quick. Yeah. I also just like to watch videos, right. to be honest. Gotcha. But yeah. For all those same reasons, I'm going to say visual. Okay. But I'd also add the reality is anytime I've tried to listen to just the audio, my attention, it's not there the don't. same. Totally yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Makes sense. Same, same with me. Question for y'all, and this is particularly mainly because you you have a nonprofit, right? Y'all both have a nonprofit. Grants or crowdfunding when it comes to funding? We're going to differ on this one. I say both. You say both? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you say, sir? I'm going to say grants. Okay. And it's reluctant because the reality is my experience with grant funding, especially when it's tied to government. Right revolves around so many restrictions yes, and, and compliance issues in order to maintain that. It limits the impact mm -hmm. and ultimately the number, scope of individuals that you're allowed to serve. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely a frustration. Yeah. I understand you need some safeguards, but generally the government does not do well with grants. And I'm going to say this. I always tried to get grants. Yeah. Now, this is my very, very biased opinion. Yeah. Grants are hard to get. However, I never could afford a grant writer. My nonprofit was never yeah. fully funded. So while a whole bunch of prison wives are scrambling to write a grant proposal yeah. and we never got it, we were able to crowdfund um, and at least get some money that way. Get some money that way. See, and I asked that on purpose because as also a nonprofit 50C, I think it depends on the type of nonprofit you have. You're able to get certain things or do yeah. certain things. So I, I definitely understand that. So then, uh, Cordon, you got the next one. Yeah, it's a 501c3 or just 501c? Full disclosure, I didn't know the difference until last night. Uh, I had to Google <laughs> it. But when I Googled it, 501c3 all the way. Okay. Yeah. Because the 501c, I didn't realize you can't. So if you do that crowdsourcing, yeah. those people, I don't think they could do tax Tax exempt, but they can't write it off. Something they like that. They can't write it off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. a, yeah. that's the huge distinction. Yeah. So you want the five hundred one c three, so you can right. write it off. Right. Exactly. Your taxes. Yep. Mm. That's something people don't know. Yep. So and I'm I glad I went for my five hundred one c three because yes. I had no idea there was a difference. Yep. Really now different. I think people probably also don't know mm -hmm. because of the um, type of work we do. There's a different type within the five hundred one c whatever the numbers and letters, yeah, the letters for yeah. lobbying. Yes. Four. I four. did four. Yeah. I did not do the four because I didn't know that. I just uh, scrambled to get it. Gotcha. But like the laws that Adam was, was sentenced under were very unjust. So a lot of times I would have to kind of like toe that line, we'll say, because right, 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 I right. didn't have the lobbying thing. Gotcha. Yeah. See, but it, see, this is the things that you learn. Yeah. yeah. So just for your listeners. No, that, no, that, that's it. But that's, something, yeah. that's, why we, that's why we put these questions out yeah. so you can, so that those little nuggets that yeah. can inform are used because nonprofits are great, but then you also need to, be very clear in which one you're getting and what you're doing it for. So, yes. Let me let me give you a quick side note, too. Yes, sir. Because this last week, the organization that I now work for, Social Purpose Corrections, mm -hmm. 501c3, we were in Austin, Texas. Right. One of our contributors, funders, is the Cicero Institute. Okay. They have a separate lobbying arm. They focus on legislation. Yes. So they are our partner. We work collaboratively because we're focused on the actual impact right they're focused on the legislation the legislation perfect partnership so they're, the C, they're the c4 right because mm -hmm. the lobbying okay yep. see Got that's it. beautiful that's something they, okay we we'll talk about that teamwork teamwork made a dream work <laughs> crossfit or strength conditioning crossfit all day long why yeah. Why? Oh, why? Well, it is strength and conditioning, but you also have that group element where I've never worked as hard as I have by myself, strength yeah. and conditioning, mm -hmm. than I will with other people because you always have somebody to chase, somebody to push you. When I was at CrossFit one time, I was told, and it was so true, when you're the strongest person or the fastest person person in the gym, you need to leave and find another gym, gym yeah. because you need to always chase somebody yeah. so you can get better. Yeah. And honestly, that group atmosphere, it becomes like a family and everybody cheers each other on. It's a very healthy competition. Right. I can't say enough good things. Okay. Yeah. I, and some people like to call it a cult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, Oops. to a degree, it is a cult, right? And like you said... Not all CrossFit, CrossFit boxes, the gyms, mm -hmm. are created equal. Mm -hmm. Good point. Great community concept. 
There are some um, like Sin City CrossFit out here. We go out there and we do uh, an event with them every year. Yep. Uh, the Murph, which is to honor a fallen hero military. Got you. And it's a big thing. We go back out there. And even if it's just once a year that we're there, mm -hmm. like it's people, they see us and they're like, oh, you guys are here. Right. That community welcomes you back in. Right. Um, so there's, yeah, it's a different element to it. Something that we genuinely appreciate. Okay. So next year, Memorial Day, Murph, everybody. There you go. We're we'll see what's going on. Then. <laughs> you guys should be free. Yeah. It's yeah, nice and early in the morning. You can do barbecues morning? in the afternoon. You're okay. fine. Yeah. Cool. Put on my schedule. It's on you. <laughs> <laughs> so put it on the schedule. Uh, might have to plan that East Coast trip. <laughs> <laughs> might be out of town. No, just wait. Uh, cycle class or hit training? Uh, hit training. Okay. And why? Uh, I just really, I'm a meathead, and I really enjoy hit. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Hit. Meathead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even tell you about the the initial um, description that was given of her mm -hmm. was like bodybuilder. I okay, she so was like Xena, <laughs> warrior princess. So before I saw a picture, that's what I thought I was going out to to meet. Here's why, real quick. Can I tell you a quick story? So the man that introduced us was a big, huge Got bodybuilder, it. like Jersey Shore all the way, right? right? So the last time I saw him before he went to jail, I was training for Miss Fitness in New Jersey. Okay. I was mm. tiny, but very ripped and lean. And in his head, because he's got this bodybuilder mentality, he thought that was like the hottest thing right. to sell me as a big bodybuilder. <laughs> Literally told him, her lat spread is this wide. <laughs> so that's what he, we never, he didn't see a picture of me yeah, prior right. to this. So he was like, oh, I'm about to use it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Swole, <didn't he? laughs> and, and for the record, I saw the picture right after she won. She looked drop dead gorgeous. Thank you. So... Absolutely beautiful. Salute. But I could still kick his ass. Come on. So are you, Cordon? Um, oh, actually, it's on me. I lied. Yeah. Um, long distance running or mountain climb? How long is long distance? The, whatever the thing that Caleb was telling me he does. I consider that long. The, uh, the I think rise did, challenge? Yes. That's a combo, man. That's it's a combo? run and climb three mountains. That's why I was Whoa. wondering. Pick yeah, an yeah, amount yeah, of okay. miles, and then I'll tell you my answer. So. You said which one? Pick an amount of yeah. miles. Pick an amount of miles? Yeah, like okay. if you tell me an amount of miles, then I'll tell you if I, I want to run long or do distance, Would that consider as 5K? I'll do a 5K over a mountain. Okay. Because I'm afraid you of know, heights. You know me. I'm, I'm oh. doing both. You're doing I, both? I, I just committed to an Ironman in Barcelona <gasps> next year. So we're going to do the whole thing. Now, wow. I, I purposely asked that question for you because I'm like, <laughs> good Lord. That When they talking about the rise, I was like... <laughs> that, that was a challenge. Was I got in the car. It was my partner from inside mm -hmm. who's who's been instrumental in, you know, helping me become the person that I am. And he's like, hey, man, he goes, I need to get back right. And he's a, a little bit overweight right now. He said, there's a Ironman right. in Spain next year. You want to do it? I'm like, absolutely. Let's go. Gotcha. That's, dope. That's not like, can we Let's go for a it. run? I want to lose five pounds. That's, and then that's I a said, hefty goal. I bet. Let me ask Grove first. I need to make sure that she's on board, that we're willing, <laughs> willing to make a trip to Spain. So that's what okay. we're going to do. Oh, why would you say no? Right. Right. Like, Spain. Thank you. Right. Barcelona. Barcelona. Like, Barcelona. You go to Spain. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care how many mountains I got to climb. I'm going to Spain. Like, what? Blanket approval of forever invited to Europe. The answer is yes. Listen, any, anybody else that wants to go, we'll see. You, you can commit right Cause, here cause publicly. Because I'm going to, uh, depends, because I'm me and the wife going out of the country. But we'll, we'll, we're going to see about that. But no, thank you. Uh, that that concludes for the business on the fly. Y'all did great right. on that. Thank you. And to go into the legend, because I know we each have one question each, because we, mm -hmm. we're about to get things to wrap up. But what is the one thing for the legend? So the legend, if you remember on the map, the little key box yeah. that, that kind of really guides you to where you needed to go, certain things, symbols, the detail. What could you say to uh, a, a student who's here, who's formerly incarcerated, or just students in general? The path y'all took, the road y'all took was challenging. It was rough. It was strong. But you guys are here. That that just shows the a testament to the perseverance and and the ability of truly striving your fulfillment to get here. What would you say to our students who are struggling to have patience, mm. to find their fulfillment, and really just reaching it? What would you say to those? Mm. Do you want me to go? Oh, do you yeah, want to go? go ahead. So um, have patience, right? Mm, yes. And you really, really need to know your why. 
yes. and your goal. So I always use the example of a GPS, right? You put in an address, there's an accident on your way. The GPS can reroute and take you to the exact same destination, but you get five different choices on how you can get there. Mm -hmm. Same thing with your goal, right? right? You need to white knuckle, but you also need to be flexible enough to take another route if that's the goal that you actually want to attain. Right. And for me, with our relationship, I would have to ask myself very often and reassess, is this the goal that I actually want? want. Mm -hmm. Does somebody else want this for me? Am I holding on to it because I've been told this for so long, or I told mm -hmm. myself this for so long, but I don't actually want it mm -hmm. anymore. And you're allowed to reassess every day of your life. Just because it's hard, I don't know if that's a good enough reason to let go. What's your why underneath what your goal is? And there are times your goal might not be right. When I was in college, I wanted to be a nursing student. Didn't work out for me. I didn't like it whatsoever. Right. Changed to a psychology just wasn't for me and then wound up with sports medicine degree that I love. I absolutely love. I was able to use it for fitness. I still to this day, I don't work in that field, right. but I use what I learned all day, every day. So maybe you're going after a major and you find it so hard. Maybe that's something inside or like the universe telling you that's not right for you. Come on, reassess, come on. reassess, find your goals, find your why what's underneath it. And then it'll all just give it patience and it'll all open up for you. And that's the real. That's the real. You heard you that's the real. Hey, see, he already I knew he got it. I knew I came. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one. That's it. Man. Mm. Mr. A yeah, that's a hard follow-up, sir. Yeah, how do you follow that, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, man, she hit some some solid points right there. I think the biggest thing is, especially for young people who who are struggling, is there's a lot of talk about finding your passion. What gets you really excited? I think passion is one thing, but I also think it's important, like focus on your strengths. Right. Find those things that you are good at and commit to investing in them every day because you're going to get better and better. Mm. And listen, when you're good at something, it's a lot easier to stay with it mm -hmm. and to continue investing even when it gets harder and harder Right. because you know that you're making progress. Whereas instead of trying to focus your attention elsewhere, you know, people spend too much time focusing on weak spots or, or following somebody else's path, right? That's not their own. And Speak if it's it. not right for you, you're going to invest a whole lot of time and energy into it and not feel that sense of fulfillment mm. at the end of the day or at the end of that journey. So, yeah. And then, you know, do it every single day. I'm a big believer in those daily disciplines. And if you want to distinguish yourself from everyone else, man, just do the work every day. And I promise you, you will be further along than 99% of, you know, your peers. Man. That's another real. Yeah. That's, That's another one. We got back two of them on this one. That's I, crazy. Cordon got the last one for um, this section. You got the last question. So you said you got out 2020? August 12, 2020. Okay, so... How was it like just adjusting? Because I, I've i read, well, not, well, yeah, I've read a couple of books from people who are inside and then coming out talking about just adjusting to life. But you came out in the middle of everybody was adjusting. Like we were adjusting too. Like the world mm -hmm. just completely changed. So how was that for you? Like what, what did you mentally, like, were you just like, what's going on? Like, I just want to know. Good question. It's a great question. It is a great question. <laughs> well, here's the thing, right? I spent far more time than most. Mm -hmm. I spent over two decades inside. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of changes, right? Right. Uh, but it was also a lot of time for me to focus on making sure when I walked out the door that I was fully prepared. Right. Because I was in prison prior to this. Okay. You know, from 18 to 21, where I felt like, I missed out on my youth, my opportunity to go to college. And when I walked out the door, I was not equipped to deal with social pressures, mm -hmm. to deal with the realities of life. And I fell right back into old habits as a result. So that 20 years was a steady refinement in me becoming a different person and always mentally preparing, saying, what happened to me the last time will not happen to me this time. Right. So when I walked out the door, I, 
Like it was exactly how I envisioned it. Maybe not the exact circumstances, right? <laughs> but how life, how it would feel, how I would, you know, respond when we walked into that, you know, Walmart, the only Walmart in like a 50 mile radius, it wasn't overwhelming. Right. Gotcha. Um, but I'm also going to credit COVID with yeah. everybody was willing to give you a little bit more distance, right? Had a little like, bit of space. space yeah. Yeah, six man. feet. I, I was happy to have that. Mm -hmm. It gave me an additional buffer. And I thought about that afterwards. I said, you know, my situation, my story, like couldn't have worked out any better because I was afforded that additional space. And we had to quarantine for 14 days, um, which is a whole different story. But it gave us, that was like our honeymoon, right? Mm -hmm. 20 years and we get 14 days to, to just really focus on each other mm -hmm. and to decompress and to breathe, man. Because that's what I needed. I needed to just take a breath. Um, because honestly, since then, we haven't stopped running. Man. And we got a lot further to run. <laughs> right. Man, thank you. I can't thank you all enough for coming on this show, man, because y'all did it. Y'all are phenomenal. Y'all continue to keep doing it. So one last thing we're going to do is take a toast. This is a happy hour segment. Y'all have water. But we have ginger ale, raspberry, uh, lemonade. Y'all missing out. Y'all missing out, but it's okay. Sorry, we know y'all are some health. We, we, no, we, we can get you something afterwards. No, we're the fitness yeah. people. You're the I, fitness people. I, right. I understand. <laughs> so right. what we do right. here is we express one good thing that's happening in our lives right now. Oh, my gosh. So, and we always leave on a good note. So, starting with our guests, what's one big good thing you want to let the people know? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I just have to pick one? <laughs> I know. It's probably some one. Okay. You go first, because I, I have so many in my head right now. Okay. I'm, I'm going to start with probably the biggest one, which is one of the things that we always spoke about was being able to use our story um, to impact as many others as possible. Right. And... We just spoke with a producer mm. who is, we're in the process of hopefully closing that deal um, to bring that story Come on. to the masses. Come so, nice. on. And that's a big part of our, a, our vision, part of our plan. So, yeah, that's big. I just need an invite to the movie theater. Uh, that's yeah. all I need. The <laughs> premiere. Come on. Gotta Come premiere. Premiere. I just want, oh, yeah, please. I'll be there. VIP. Oh, listen. And, and I wear TaylorMade, so you don't have to worry about <laughs> will you? <laughs> will you style me for it? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, okay. so well, what? Done. That's coming. not a problem. There we go. Next. Oh, well, congrats on that. Yeah. How about you, Bill? <laughs> um, okay, I'm glad you said that one. So that one's checked off my list. Aside from... My lifelong dream of having a baby. We have a two-year-old. I mean, being a mom is next level. So mm -hmm. that's something really good for me. Right. Um, I took a sidestep, we'll say, as from Strong Pros and Wives and Families, where I had a group of volunteers running it, just because our lives got crazy with the baby, this and that. But I was just asked last week to consult yeah. for um, a production that it's still in the very, very, very early stages, mm. but they want to do... Um, a plague, like Broadway, but here, and then okay. they're going to bring it around the country. Like Smith Center? Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, and they're going to focus on children of incarcerated parents. And wow. they were asking for real life stories. And I love it because when I watch a prison show and I've talked to other people who watch prison, prison shows and it's like completely made up in bullshit, excuse me, yeah. nonsense. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't trust you. I don't want to yeah. watch anymore. So I was so honored to be part of that. Okay. No. Oh. Yeah. That trumps us. Cordon, what's going on good with you? Wow. Um, I'm just happy to be here, man. Like, yeah. life is pretty smooth right now. Doing the podcast, going to school, working. Yeah. Like, I'm just happy about life right now. I would have to say my best part is this episode today. Uh, I was looking forward to this episode. So, and just to hear this, that love the y'all. You're good. The one good thing, I know y'all the plethora. I'm just happy to hear it. And on top of that, having my kids in the studio, man. So that's that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> this girl. So toast to you both. I oh man, toast Cheers. to you both. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers over. So this camera, that camera. Tell that camera where they can find you, follow you, everything. That camera right there. 
Tell them where they can find you. They can find us at Grit Ability, G R I T A B I L I T Y, on anywhere you listen to your podcasts uh, and anywhere on social media. Also, Strong Prison Wives and Families. Perfect. Man, thank you both for coming on to the show. It's been great having y'all on here. And I knew that this was going to be a powerful one. But just thank you for taking your time out. I know how busy you both are. And just, just thank you. Yes, thanks for coming. Oh, this is of course, yeah, yeah, thank you for having us. Of course. I appreciate it. Anytime. I'm, I'm looking forward to the. I'll be at the premiere. You're ready for, for the premiere. <laughs> right. He's on my Spain. I'm like, I'm about oh. to hit up Spoon. Give me a suit right now. Yeah, hit him ready. Yep. Got to get a spoon. So ah, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you all who's been watching. This is... The Business Information Buffet Podcast, also known as the Bid Podcast, where everybody eats. We are your host, Sean Tory and Mr. Cordon Allen, and we are going, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you all next time. Be blessed, be safe, Peace. keep striving. <laughs>